Okay, hi everybody. Um, I've been asked a couple of times <clears throat> to actually show people how I manipulate the images that I get for my Roll20 games, etc. Because I basically, when I roll, run a Pathfinder game or I run another game and I'm using a prepared module, I pretty much go in and, and use the PDFs of those modules, which I've purchased legally. Um, to uh, use in the game, so I've been asked how I do that. Now, in essence, what I do is for my maps um, when I'm using a Pathfinder game. So I'm using, for example, Pathfinder Adventure Path Shadows Shards of Sin, which <coughs> I believe is the first in the Shattered Star group. I never ran this was never really keen on the module series but it's good for some examples um, I'm also using Linux today uh, I use Linux Elementary and everybody else should as well but due to that I have um, they give you an interactive maps um, uh, PDF which allows you to turn off map tags and stuff like that. Now I haven't found uh, a PDF reader that actually uh, uses the interactive stuff for that anyway but that doesn't really bother me terribly much. I'm manipulating, uh, well I can manipulate enough to be able to get rid of numbers and letters. I'm not going to be doing that today though. If you are doing it I suggest you use the Windows version and the Windows Adobe PDF will allow you to click map tags off and all of this stuff that's you know Ooh, interesting points of view and the map tags of A4, A5, A6 etc will disappear off your map. Um, you can also turn grids off and stuff like that so that's fine. So the first thing I'll have a look at is how do I get maps. Okay so the first thing that I do is I'll put uh, material up on screen. If I want it to um, uh, be the main focus I'll try and sort of get it to be as large as possible so I'll zoom in I might make it up to well, 100% so say we're going to use this map here okay now we can make them even bigger now I'm no, there's a lot of wasted space on some of these maps for example this ground floor I don't need to know that the compass I'm not going to use any of this material what I'll be doing is using dynamic lighting <coughs> pardon me to represent some of that material so I don't care about all that sort of material I try and get the image as big as possible the, the of the stuff that matters okay so that's perhaps a little too big so we'll stick at the 200 level wait for it to refresh itself Okay, now I'll take a screenshot. So via mine I've got a, a print screen, so I go my function and I print screen it and it shows you there that it looks like it's taken a photo. Um, on Windows there'll be different ways. Essentially what you want to do is to get it onto your copy board or for it to automatically go to file. So I've done that a couple of times and what I do then is I open my image ed editor. Now I use GIMP. Okay, GIMP is a free product and it's uh, bleeding good. Okay, so I'm going to create from clipboard. Okay, there's no image on clipboard because mine goes direct to file. So if you're using the Windows version and you've got it sent to the clipboard, you can create via from clipboard. Otherwise, um, we need to find the file that we just took. So I'm going to open an existing image. Now we've got them here recently used. Okay, it pops up straight away came up 1221 so either of those will do they're both the same shop I'll open it up okay what it does is it gives me the maps Okay, normally I'd have the tag the um, these tags turned off or or whatever um, I will find a version of essentially but what we do is we just grab our selection box okay I'm not going to use this much of a walk-in so I'll probably use about that much of it line it up select what we need okay if that looks good and then I just go edit uh, select sorry crop to selection no it was edit, image crop to selection image crop to selection and you can see from there our image is sized down to what it needs to be etc now all we really need to do from here because that maps now ready to use okay so I need to save it as something so this is the lower level 
in the sewer area. If you wanted to do some stuff, I suppose I can show you just briefly if you wanted to get rid of some of this material. Okay, we can use some healing tools, which means you come across and you control and click to get a source. So I might use over in this next tab, control and click that, and that'll be my source. And then I can start using that. It starts covering it with the material from the other line. So, and suddenly, voila, all gone. I'd spend a bit more time with it and it'd look a lot better, etc. But <coughs> you get the idea. You can get rid of those tags pretty quickly if you don't have the interactive sort of style. So I go File, Save As, and I'm going to call it Lower Level Sewer. And I'll put that into my image manipulation folder, which I created simply for this. So we'll put it in there and we'll save it. Okay, Lower Level Sewer, PNG. I like using PNGs. It's a good image thing. You can make them JPEGs. You can make them whatever you want. But I use a lot of transparency in some of my stuff, so I use PNGs. So I save it. Comes up and says, do you want to save it in this way? And we're done. So then if I was, let me bring up Chrome. I'll bring up Roll20. Oh, oops. Roll. 20.net brings me in. It'll recognize me in a second, hopefully. So I don't have to sign in. There we go. I'll stick it in Rain of Winter just for a giggle. Okay. Just to confuse everybody completely and utterly. Wait for everything to load up. And I'm going to create a new page, okay, which is over here. Go have a look at it. And all I need to do is get that up and we'll go into my folder and just click and drag him in. Just a couple of moments to load it up. And you'll see that the image comes in here. And then you can move it around and manipulate it as you want and send it to the map layer. Okay, after you've done it, but you can resize it, make the grid, you know, make it nice and large, etc. And away you go. So that's how we can do that. I'll send that to the map layer and then I'll show you how to do tokens. Okay. Now, um, just a, a, a part, a, an aside here. Oh, look, I have my little mouse right in the middle of it. It's not terribly handy. Um, but <coughs> what is something that you can do with this? I always used to spend hours trying to get my grids to match up with the other grids. Um, and you can do it, it is possible. But I hated the way that you couldn't move your thing within uh, uh, to the side and halfway through grids and stuff like that unless you press the Alt button. I found a secret though. If you go and you turn your grid off, okay, with the grid off you've automatically got the grid that's already appeared in the, in the particular image so people can pay attention to that if they want. But you can move tokens wherever you want and it doesn't snap to grid. Excellent tip, by the way. Excellent tip. Okay, so what I'll do now is we'll go on and we'll have a look at how I do tokens. Okay, so we'll bring up, okay, so there are the maps. What I want is the actual adventure. So for me, I like to have a handout of a particular NPC so I can show it to players when they come in. So I'm going through. As you can see, the, the module here. Um, okay, and we might have this section here. So we're going to use Kariah as Marin, whoever she is in the particular part of the adventure. But what we do is again take a screenshot, but we'll try and make her as big as we can get her. I reckon 300 will work well for this one. Okay, so we can get in a bit of detail. And there's a nice, nice shot of her. 
So we do the old print screen and we zip across to our GIMP. Oh, I just passed it. There we are. So we're going to go file new and no, I want to file open image. I file open, um, not that one. So we go back here, recently used, screenshot from today. There we are, we open it up and here's the image. Okay, so again, we're going to use a selection box. Okay, I'm not going to put a name in there because uh, it doesn't matter. I'll put a name in there for the time being. And we'll go image crop to selection. And we have this. Now what we also want to do is we want to get rid of all this text because we don't want that distracting anybody when they're looking at it. So find the eraser button. Okay, whack it up to the biggest sort of size that we can get. And I tend to do this. Okay. Um, you can add a transparency level layer. So this comes as a transparency or you can just get rid of all the thing and have it on white. It's completely up to you. I generally add it to a transparency so I can hand some nice shaped images along but really it doesn't matter I suppose. So skip along we're almost done. Um, of course I spend a lot more time on this if I accidentally go over here or something like that I'm not going to worry too much about. It. Okay I don't know why the selection is still there but there we go so now I would pretty much save that so we'll save as um, Cariah Asmarin or Cariah handout okay and I'll save that to the image manipulation folder save okay we're done now the next thing we want is a token so we can add that that image to the handouts but we want a token which are generally round and whatnot so we're going to use an ellipse select tool and we're going to come in here and we want a nice round picture of a face okay so when we do an ellipse select to drag this image out what you want to do is you want to click on this fixed button so it's an automatic aspect ratio so it basically holds in the image to a perfect sort of level so what I mean is it's going to give us a perfect circle when we do it um, so we just click and we drag a circle around okay so that's a, a a nice image of it right there now we do the same thing we go image crop to selection and you have this section here but you can actually see that we've got stuff outside the circle which is distracting and we don't want it um, we are going to need to add to this um, alpha channel but we're going to get our selection and we invert it so currently what's selected is also everything outside of the circle and we go image or edit clear and you can see we've got this white area around the side. So, okay, so what we want to do is we want to add an alpha channel. So all of that cleared section that you can just see that's cleared out actually turns to invisible. So it's like a token, it's like a round circle. So we right click the background and we go add alpha channel. Okay, and that has given it. So if we now go edit clear you'll see it actually disappears we have an alpha channel so everything that has the check there will actually appear as uh, transparency so we're almost done except there's one thing that we want to do and we want to get that selection we want to invert it again so it's now a selection just around the edges of this thing now you can do this neater and tidier if you really really want to and I suppose I'd better just so I show you the right way to do it when you do this you need to take a look at 
your section of where it um, points what uh, location you're in. So if you follow the mouse down here, in this section when I put onto the section will show you where you are in the location. Now you want it to be, both the numbers to be the same, so like 2020. And I'm going to select a new area. Okay, and you want to take it out to Another area is constrained so it's fixed. And we're going to Sorry about that, I got a little bit uh, interrupted then, but uh, what we've got here is I've selected a perfect circle. You can see it's just inside the previous selection. What we're going to do is add a border to the token. So what you want to do is you want to go and you want to select something that you would like to see as a border in the pattern section. I generally try to use some kind of something woodcut. Some people like something a bit more vibrant like the hazard symbol, etc. I'll use <coughs> uh, this blue one for the day. So I select that. Now what we go up here is we need to go to our selection and uh, actually the edit menu and we stroke selection. You can select the width of sort of the um, stroke and here's where you select your pattern and we stroke it and you can see that comes out as a nice circle with some kind of patterning around it. So here I would save this, uh, which I've probably actually just over over in my handout file, which was pretty dumb, but there you go. We'll save as, lucky I'm not doing it for anything I'd want to use, we will go Karaya token. Okay, and save. through the ring roll once we're there we come back in now if we were adding a handout we come here we click add under the handouts and you get this section here okay where you can just drop the file in now I'm not going to be doing that but if we want the token in here we just go to our little folder grab the Karaya token okay and we click and we drag it in. Now this is going to come up as huge because of the size that I actually copied it at but we can actually modify that size once it's in. So give it a couple of seconds and there it is. Like I said, huge. Um, we select it, modify the size of it okay. and now you've got a nice token that you can drag around the map, etc. So that's how you do it, that's how you cut your maps out, that's how you grab your tokens out. Um, using free tools, I also use PDFs that I've purchased or actually get as, a, as part of the subscription service to the games that I want to play. So I hope this has been helpful for, for some of you. Thanks very much.